Hi guys and welcome to Tech Team GB. In this video we're going to be covering the differences between the Streamlabs OBS and the, well, standard OBS. If you don't know what OBS in general is, it's open broadcasting software. It's a free and open source bit of software that allows you to record your gameplay, record your displays, record webcams and a lot of other things that make, you know, streaming and content production really a lot easier. Now I've been using OBS to test games games and uh, you know stream uh, both the, the weekly live streams and uh, kind of everything else and just generally been using it for a number of years now and it's a great bit of kit. There's a lot of plugins and other things that you can get for it which are all uh, generally open source and generally free to get as well so that's obviously very nice but more recently there has been a fork of OBS to uh, the, the Streamlabs company if you like. Now Streamlabs is someone who are a company that has been doing a plugin for OBS as, a, as I'm aware as well as a number of other separate tools including chatbots and things like that but they've now released their own version of OBS which basically has all of their kind of widgets and things built into it along with a few extra features. Now here's a look at a standard OBS window. You have your settings and recording buttons down the bottom, you have your uh, kind of scene settings and then your uh, kind of devices in those scenes uh, settings as well as an audio mixer down the bottom, you have your preview window at the top and that's pretty much it. You have a very small bar down the bottom that lets you you know things like any drop frames, your connection and your bit rate and if the stream quality is all good and otherwise uh, it's a kind of a relatively basic UI. Now here's a look at Streamlabs OBS. So it is a lot more of a kind of uh, kind of refined uh, UI experience if you like. Everything is still basically where it should be in terms of the standard editor window but you now have tabs at the top which allow you to change different things. So for example in the live tab you now get a full notification feed of everything that has happened from anything, any of the platforms you've connected. So in my case, I've connected Twitch, YouTube, and Patreon, which means that every time anyone subscribes on YouTube, on Twitch, follows, uh, you know, uh, subscribes on Patreon, all of that gets listed in the kind of feed and then I can see those and shout them out and things like that as well. There is also the dashboard side which is basically just a web browser to the Streamlabs website but it allows you to change a lot of your widget settings down at the bottom as well as install themes and things like that which are quite nice if you are you know game streaming and you want a, a predefined or an easy kind of package that you can just click and have it all set up and ready which is obviously quite cool uh, and otherwise uh, the, those uh, settings for each of the widgets are actually quite useful you can change change things like what uh, platforms the uh, things like the chat box will read and things like that any color differences and stuff like that as well so there's a, there's a lot of settings to be had there now for me the real main difference between the two isn't the the live window which is quite nice it isn't you know the the dashboard it's actually those widgets themselves those widgets are the, the key things that I find are the most different and the most useful those include an alert box so when anyone say subscribes on on YouTube or Twitch or follows you on Twitch or uh, kind of does in any number of actions that can all be displayed with a gif on the screen as well as some text for the name and what they did uh, you can also do other things with with the alert box but again Again, it's kind of up to you there are a lot of options available uh, you can then also have your chat box where it reads all of the chat from the connected platform so again in my case that was twitch and YouTube and while currently it's just or at least for my, as my settings go anyway uh, it's just a basic uh, kind of transparent chat box um, for, for me I ended up putting a, a, a coloured box behind it but either way um, that you can change a lot of settings with that as well but also it does read in all of the messages which is really cool to see. You also have a number of other widgets including things like a donations goal so if you are a streamer especially if you're trying to save up for something for example you can have a donations bar on screen which allows you to then you know as you get donations through the Streamlabs link that they set up for you when you enable it uh, that that is a really easy way to go about it uh, and actually one of the most interesting things is that as far as I'm aware they don't take any money from any donations or anything else. So since I mentioned that they don't take money from donations you might be wondering how they make their money. Are they you know collecting all of your data and selling it all off? 
uh, or you know do you have to pay for some subscription service to get you know access to anything is there an in-store uh, inbuilt store kind of thing well I'm happy to say that it's actually at least currently anyway incredibly simple uh, on a reddit thread that asked this specific question uh, Streamlabs themselves replied saying that they have a premium service Streamlabs Pro which allows you to do more customization on things like the alerts uh, but that is a I think like five or six dollar a month uh, subscription fee and that is it that is how they make the money now there are a lot of people who use Streamlabs OBS and apparently there are a lot of people that subscribe to that uh, kind of pro package which means that apparently they're doing just fine with the, the team that they have and stuff like that. They may end up offering extra services or they may end up offering different subscription plans or something like that, but for the time being, at least as far as I'm aware in a way, that is the only way they make money. So it all seems pretty positive then. It's a fork of OBS, so it's already a great software to start with, and in theory, they should be able to do all of the OBS updates as and when they come out nice and easy. You have a great number of extra features, including those extra widgets, which are really kind of useful. You you can connect to things like Twitch, YouTube, Patreon, and a number of other services. You can also push to uh, connect to Discord and then push your live stream announcement to Discord, though I did have some trouble with that while streaming, so I'm not entirely sure what's going on there, but you can do that sort of thing. Uh, and otherwise, you, you get some really nice features. Is it worth uh, switching to you know, Streamlabs OBS if you're using uh, you know the standard version of OBS? I would say so. It seems like a great way to get some extra features for completely free. You can import all of your settings nice and easy and yeah, it just gives you a lot of extra functionality for, again, for free. So will I be switching to Streamlabs OBS? Well, generally speaking, I think I will be, yeah. At least for the, the live streaming, uh, kind of every week, or every Thursday at 8 p.m. UK time, I think I, I will be sticking with that. I'll probably hold on to OBS, the, my standard OBS installation, and I'll probably still keep using OBS just to record uh, the gameplay and things like that um, on, you know, test systems and, and for, for specifically testing purposes. But otherwise, for for, for you know, my actual streaming usage, I'll probably be hanging on to, to OBS, uh, Streamlabs OBS anyway. So otherwise, that is pretty much it. If you want to donate, then you can use that Streamlabs link in the description down below. You can also check out the Patreon link as well if you want to go through and get some specific rewards for it. And you can also use the Amazon and Overclock as you can affiliate links, which also massively help me out. You can check out the subscribe button if you're new to the channel. If you have any questions or any thoughts on Streamlabs OBS yourself, let me know in those comments down below. I'd love to have a chat with you or answer your question if I can. You can also check out the other videos over here. And again, um, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you all in the next video.